We're here at uh, Ross Chapman's loft. Uh, Ross is only a small team flyer in the association uh, compared with a lot of other flyers. Uh, Ross has been uh, in the top 30 uh, nine times in the last 12 years. Uh, Ross, what do you do to motivate your birds? Oh, I don't do anything really. <laughs> uh, I'm just a believer that they just fly home, they fly to the perch. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's actually something that I read an article on it just this year from uh, John Wettering's son David, where he said a half motivated pigeon will beat a fit unmotivated pigeon. And uh, I was actually going to ring him up and ask him how he done it. Uh. So no, I don't do anything. I just believe you just get them fit and race it. And straight to the perch. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, and later on in the year, well, perhaps they might mate up, but I keep the hens and cocks together anyway. They never ever separated. They fly together, they train together, mm. they just live together. Yeah. So I never separate them. Yeah. Uh, do you think pigeons have got personalities? My word, I definitely do. Uh, I've got a uh, black cock in there and uh, as soon as I go to the water container to fill it up, out he comes and he's pretty quick and he'll nick off and go and have a fly and when he's ready to go back in, he comes across the back door and gives me a little, you know, like I'm here, well, yeah. you know, let me in. And I just walk across and he'll fly straight through, straight into the door. So he's got a definite personality. He knows when he's out and he knows when he wants to go back in. Yep. <laughs> How do you pair your birds up, Ross? Is it winners to winners, or do you keep certain lines or families together? Uh, mainly winners to winners. I, uh, I used to follow a very heavy culling program, and briefly I used to give points to my birds from five back to one, the first bird home to my loft. And at the end of the year, if they didn't have the right amount of points, they just left. And uh, then I'd pick out a few which would go in the stock loft and they would be the best birds to the best birds. But say I'd kept, I don't know, 20 hens and 20 cocks including my stock pairs and I had say 10 pairs unmated, I'd just put them in there and let them mate this up their own way. Mm. So most of my best matings I've spent months and weeks and days and sleepless nights trying to work out matings and most of my best matings have come from a couple of pigeons mating on the floor yeah. and I've been lucky enough to have two or three real good pairs and I ain't responsible for any of them. <laughs> you feed a small seed mix Ross and if you do what does it consist of? No, well I have over the years but I've found that pigeons, I don't think they're great fans of a lot of small seeds. Uh, I think I've tried just about every mixture you could one year I flew just about all on peas, I've flown on peas and wheat. Uh, I've tried all sorts of mixtures and what I feed now is, is five different grains. Mm -hmm. One of peas, one of wheat, one of maize, one of milo, one of sap. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't think it makes too much difference. No. You know, I'll, uh, you, you've probably had success feeding entirely different to that. Alan's probably had success right. feeding yep. entirely different yep. to that. I don't think food's all that important. If mm. it's just a good, healthy food, then I think the birds fly home and yeah. that's, you know, yeah. that's my thoughts on yeah. it. Do you use any probiotics at all, Ross? No, not on a regular basis. I'm planning to this year. Uh, I use Probac when I'm from, mm -hmm. from yep. Colin Walker. Uh, and last year I was going pretty well. I think I won five races straight. And with the last three races coming up, my birds got ill. And uh, I think perhaps I was a bit slack on my part. And had I perhaps uh, given them probiotics, I may have avoided it. Mm. And this year I'm going to discuss it with, with Colin Walker. Because uh, I really think that I really don't give drugs to my pigeons. I treat them for canker. And, that, and I've done that for a long while and that's just two days on Turbosol every three weeks. And I've not really had a problem, but twice I've come unstuck from not 
giving them mm. antibiotics and yeah. things. So I'm just going to be advised by Colin this year right. whether he thinks I should. And I normally get uh, droppings tested before the start of the year. And the only thing, they've, they've never had worms, they've never had coccidiosis. The only thing they've ever had is uh, elevated yeast levels. Mm -hmm. And probiotics keeps that under control. Yeah, yeah. So this year I think I probably will use the probiotics. Mm -hmm. What do you look for in a sick pigeon? Oh, uh, I had a few this year that sort of looked like they were going light, the old fashioned going light, mm -hmm. yeah. and I treated them with a quarter of a flagell tablet. One of them recovered, the next one didn't, and I, so I killed that. And then I got two more, and I just went back the old fashioned way and I put them in the bin straight away. I think it's really important to get them out of your loft because they, they're infecting other birds. Mm. And I haven't really got anywhere to keep them except in the stock loft and I'm not keen on doing that. So this year I've reverted back to the old ways of uh, if I get a sick pigeon it goes in the bin. Yeah. Do you medicate your birds after they return from a race? No, I don't. No, they, like I said, they have uh, Tervisol for two days every three weeks. That may turn out to be a Monday after race, because it's a Monday or Tuesday, but no, I don't. I steer clear of medicines as much as I can, and as I said to you before, I think perhaps to my detriment sometimes, mm. that you can, if the bird's ill, it probably needs treatment, and if they need antibiotics, they probably should have antibiotics, but I've got a bit stubborn and wouldn't give them to them, and, mm. and it's caught me out a couple of times. Yeah.